Okay, hello folks. Uh, my name's Dan McPherson and I'm a senior technical, a senior principal technical writer at Red Hat and I'm here to do a presentation on Ho Hotel OpenStack, what I call a new analogy for explaining OpenStack. Now, just as a bit of a disclaimer, this presentation is meant to be lighthearted, so, um, you know, it, it does rely heavily on analogy and as a result, there are some parts that require some suspension of disbelief. So if anybody has any questions for how some of these things are meant to work in a literal sense, the answer is always going to be magic elves did it, okay? Um, the problem, um, and this is something that I actually encountered before I came to Summit, just the, the weekend before I came here. Um, somebody asked me, what do I do for a living? I said, I'm a technical writer. Okay, what do you do, which company do you work for? Work for Red Hat, a software company. Okay, what sort of software do you write for? Cloud. And the answer I got was, oh, yeah, I don't know much about cloud. It's sort of like my documents get sent up there. Or, you know, and that's kind of a dangerous way to look at cloud, I think, to sort of like think that your, your documents sort of go up there. And really, the average person doesn't really know what cloud is, and which means that the average person doesn't really know what OpenStack does, which means explaining how OpenStack works in a simple manner can be a nightmare. And in fact, a couple of years ago, we used to have t-shirts where this was the main question that was asked about OpenStack at the time. Um, and if you don't believe that this is a real t-shirt, I actually have the actual t-shirt here. See? So it's a real t-shirt. So what I aim to do with this presentation is answer three questions that an average person would ask. So what is the cloud? Why do we call it the cloud? And how does the cloud work? So first question, what is the cloud? Behold the cloud. That's pretty much it. Or at least that's one of many sites for, that make up the cloud. Um, there's a lot of definitions that you know, are, you know, what is, that, that sort of describe the cloud. Um, none of them are very useful, I find. You've got the, the NIST definition, which, I mean, I'm not gonna read that all out because that's a, a nightmare to read and a nightmare to explain to, to other people as well. My definition, though, a bunch of large warehouses with lots of computing resources and services you can use online very easily. Some people use them privately. Some people rent them out to the general public. Some people do both. Simple. And only that, I've incorporated private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud. But why do we call it the cloud? So a lot of people tend to think um, of cloud as a buzzword. And it has been used as a buzzword by a lot of people in the past. Um, but really, it has some historical roots. It actually has roots in the 70s. System administrators back then would try and sketch out their infrastructure as a diagram and to save time representing a whole complex network of internet interconnected services, uh, servers that just use a cloud icon. And to sort of, they still do. For example, here from um, Rackspace is an example of one of their network diagrams. As you can see, you've got cloud one, you've got cloud network two, and you've even got the internet there just represented as a cloud. Nice, simple way to represent a network. So if somebody asks why we call it the cloud, you could say because most sysadmins are too lazy to map out their networks. So how does the cloud work? So I've got a book recommendation. This is a book that I read earlier this year, and it is great. The, despite the title, Explain the Cloud Like I'm 10, it is actually a really useful book in terms of describing and explaining how the cloud actually works, or how cloud services actually work, how cloud infrastructure works. And there's one quote here that I pulled from that book. Uh, on network diagrams, they use symbols to represent the different things that they're building. When building a house, for example, you use a symbol for a door instead of drawing a detailed picture of the exact door you want. Knowing details like that will be figured out later, probably after quite a few arguments. Interesting analogy. Let's take it one step further, I thought. So say you've got a block of land, and you can do anything you want with this land. You can Build a log cabin. Single room, log cabin, it's got everything that you need there, live out in the woods. In many ways, it's just like a single server. You've got everything that you want on, installed on there, um, and that's it. 
That's the extent that you go to. Um, and that used to be the case back in several decades ago. Nowadays, though, with houses, we could divide our log cabin into several rooms. And each has a similar sort of, a similar sort of um, architecture as the house. It's got four walls, it's got a roof, but at the same time, each room has an individual purpose. You've got a bathroom, a bedroom, a kitchen. In many ways, it's like virtualization. You can divide the resources of your system to create virtual machines, and each has an individual purpose, um, but still retaining the same uh, structure as a physical machine. So some of the main aspects of cloud infrastructure, you've got multi-tenancy, you've got resources, services, facilities, you've got short-term, long-term usage, you've got secure access, you've got billing. Sound familiar? Let's take our block of land and let's build a hotel. And not just any hotel, it's a hotel that's sort of magic. This hotel, you can create rooms to suit whoever is staying at the hotel. It's the best hotel in the world. Let's call this hotel, Hotel OpenStack. And that's an amazing Photoshop job that I've done there as well. So for example, multi-tenancy. Just like a hotel, OpenStack allows multiple tenants to use facilities. You've got a short-term user requiring small resources, so that's, for example, me staying at a hotel during the Open Infrastructure Summit. Then you've got organizations deploying and consuming large amounts of resources. That would be akin to, say, Katy Perry and her entourage staying a few weeks before a concert and preparing for a concert. Now, you might think it's silly to bring up Katy Perry in a presentation about cloud computing. Well, you'd be wrong, because there's her cloud right there. So some of the other facets um, of cloud computing and hotels, you've got key card access, identity management. Each person is issued a key card and can access only certain rooms. And you've also got key cards for staff. You've got key cards um, for various members of staff. In the same way with OpenStack, uh, you can access your tenants using your authentication details. And you have general users. You've got admin users. So you've got users for different purposes. Rooms. In many ways, they're all like virtual machines. Um, you can customize your rooms to, to suit whatever features that you want. So you might need a supersized room for uh, whatever purposes that, that you know, suit. Um, you might have, uh, you might need to change the dimensions of your room. In many ways, with OpenStack, you could do the same for virtual machines, for main applications, database, load balancers, and you could scale the virtual machines. And in some ways, you could also akin this, if you wanted to do containers, you could do a hotel Kubernetes, um, and containers could be your rooms. You've got storage, which is akin to paperwork, so you might have document storage um, for your hotel. You might say, okay, yep, we can store any documents. So Katy Perry and her entourage have a set of paperwork, they've got tour dates, set lists, invoices, costume designs. Luckily, Magic Elf can take that paperwork and take it to the storage facility um, nearby the hotel. It also makes additional copies for two additional storage facilities, and they can magically retrieve um, in mere seconds. In many ways, like storage clusters. You've also got tenant networks, akin to intercom, so each room can have an intercom. And you can speak to whoever, and also set up rules defining who can speak to who in your, your tenant. Um, and that's pretty much like private networks uh, for your tenant to connect to virtual machines. You've also got phone lines, provider networks, so you can dial out um, and say, for example, Katy Perry's team are hungry. They want to order some pizzas. They can dial out, um, and the number of the hotel shows up, not the direct number for the room. So the room acts as a gateway out to the pizza shop. You've also got direct phone numbers, so floating IPs. We've actually got a magic elf right there, but you could use floating IPs um, in the same way that a hotel would use phone numbers and assign phone numbers to particular lines of a hotel. So Katy Perry's fiance can call her up, says I miss you, and can call directly, and she can respond, who gave you this number, call my agent, you're not supposed to be calling this line, Orlando. Um, but in the same way, OpenStack assigns a floating IP address so that the outside world can communicate with your virtual machines. You've also got monitoring and billing. So Katy Perry's team, they use the minibar, they overuse it, you can set up alert, um, to say, hey, you're really, really overusing the minibar, this is going to cost a lot. 
They say, yep, no problem, or Katy Perry might go, that's it, no more use of the minibar. Same with regular OpenStack, you can use tele uh, telemetry components to monitor resource usage and, imp and implement chargeback, and set alarms in case usage exceeds certain capacity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So some takeaways. So cloud infrastructure and OpenStack might seem like complex topics to ordinary people, but there are some simple ways that you can think about them. So using an analogy to describe. Um, it's best, I think, with the cloud, if somebody sort of says, what is the cloud, to just be straight and sort of go with the, the literal um, representation of what the cloud is. It's basically just a bunch of warehouses. Lots of computing resources and services you can use online very easily. You can rent them. Um, and yeah, ooh. Um, and we call it the cloud because most of the time we're too lazy to map out, but <laughs> map out our infrastructure. And it's, it's true, prove me wrong. Um, and using cloud infrastructure like OpenStack is a lot like having a hotel where people can rent rooms and make use of the facilities. And that concludes my lightning talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>